Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering here in Lexington, Virginia. A different location. I've got uh, part of the rest of the basement kind of organized and uh, finally able to use my favorite chair. It's been in storage for over a year and uh, it's kind of nice to have it out. Um, hope you're doing well this Sunday. These points came from some illustrations in and around the house within the past few days and I pray that God's word resonates with your soul as I talk about them. Father, help us to receive the living water that you would have us have. May it grow up within us and radiate the life that you so richly want to lavish on us through us to others. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, kind of a potential title would be Filling Up With Life, Rooted With Life, Battling With Life, and Peace With Life. So, filling up, rooted, battling, and peace with life. Life meaning the life to the fullest that we have in Jesus Christ. Well, we received some rain yesterday, and I was excited that some of my rain barrels uh, were filled up a little bit. So, I took all the water and put it in one rain barrel. So it wouldn't evaporate as much over the week and I could use it on the plants in case it doesn't rain like I would like it to. Uh, trying to avoid putting town water on it because rain water is so much better. And the garden is doing really well. It's just uh, hitting a little bit of dry spill and getting a little worried. So I collected all this water in the yard and put it in one rain barrel, which was a mistake on my part because there is a slow leak that I did not know about in this one particular barrel. I just found out. Got up this morning and had to water some stuff that I transplanted yesterday and the water was gone out of this rain barrel which kind of gave me that sick feeling in my stomach and I realized, quickly realized there's a slow leak in this rain barrel. So, why am I telling you this? Well, all of a sudden, I went to God's Word in my heart and mind. And this is just a, another illustration I can use to to teach and to not, not just teach you, the listener, but myself. That's the way God works. He uses a lot of things in everyday life to point out His truths that are ancient truths that are written in the Word of God. And Jeremiah 2.13 says this, For my people, and his people were the uh, Israelites, the Hebrews, the Jews, that he picked out of all the nations to be a light to every other nation to give them hope. It wasn't that he didn't like or love other people. It doesn't, not that he doesn't like or love other people. He just picked some people to carry his message, and they didn't always listen and do well, just like we who follow Christ these days apart of Jewish or not we tend to screw up Jeremiah 2.13 for my people have committed a double evil they have abandoned me the fountain of living water and dug cisterns for themselves cracked cisterns that cannot hold water mm -hmm. So, here we are looking at people that were picked by God to share his hope and light to the rest of the nations. And they turned their back on him. And he was a source of living water for them, life. And they dug for themselves their own lives that were empty and 
not only had I mean, my rain barrel had a slow leak, these had fast leaks. And how many times have we done it ourselves? Have we tried to find life in all the wrong places, as the song says? You know, looking for life in all the wrong places, looking for love in all the wrong places, which love and life can be synonymous. Because Jesus, God is love, Jesus is God, so Jesus is love. And so I was reminded of, the, of this verse in Jeremiah when my rain barrel was dry this morning after having a substantial amount of rainwater in it, which I wanted to give some life force to the plants with. But as it is, I'm hoping that this illustration helps you and I understand that we often dig ourselves these life containers of pursuing everything but our relationship with God and there's always a leak and it doesn't fulfill and you may trick yourself into thinking that it fulfills for a while and it might satisfy the gratifications of the flesh for a while and make it and you get these highs but when it's all said and done and those still small moments of life you realize that there has to be more than this and that's if you're there that's who I'm talk. you're who I'm talking to today if you know there's more to life than just what you've been doing if you feel like you're a rain barrel that's been leaking out every time the precious rain comes then this message is for you John 7 37 Jesus uh is in a within a group of people and he he's trying to speak some truth to him he gets a little frustrated and he uh mm -hmm. he cries out to him because there it's the uh the religious leaders who are f frustrating not the common everyday joe but john seven thirty seven. On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and cried, If anyone is thirsty, he should come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scripture has said, will have streams of living water flow from deep within him. And he said, If you're thirsty, come to me. I'll fill you up. And I'm telling you that uh, I... I run to him every day to get filled up because uh, I can't I can't live without him. Um, and if you're if you feel empty today, it's it's not a far reach. Jesus has al is already reached out to all of humanity, and. Um, it's not something you have to do on your own. He's already done it for us, which is pretty amazing. Isaiah 55, similarly, says this. In Isaiah 55, God says, Come, everyone who is thirsty, come to the waters. And you without money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why do you spend money on what is not food and your wages on what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and you will enjoy the choices of foods. Pay attention and come to me. Listen so that you will live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The promises are sure to David since I have, him a witness, have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. So you will summon a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you will run to you. For the Lord your God, even the Holy One of Israel, has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Let the wicked one abandon his way, and the sinful one his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, so he may have compassion on him. And to our God, for he will freely forgive. Maybe you needed to hear that. I know I needed to be reminded that I can come to him because I know I'm thirsty and I know that I can't do it on my own. 
John 15, 5 talks about an aspect of once you do have a relationship with Jesus Christ that it's imperative that we abide, we hunker down, we stick with him. John 15, 5 says that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. So that's why I have to have a routine of hanging out with the Lord every day and listening to his word and seeking his advice on things, the daily thing that I have to be continually filled. You know, or if, if I don't do that, I feel like the rain barrel that has a slow leak in it because we are bombarded with thoughts and ideas all day long through various methods, whether it's social media, whether it's the news, whether it's people we interact with daily on different levels. We are bombarded with all kinds of stuff. And if we don't get rooted in the Word of God, the truth, then we can easily be like that rain barrel that I had that had a slow leak and in a little while we can just be completely dry again. Which brings me to this point. i got some milkweed but I'm trying to draw the monarchs to my yard and I, tra I transplanted them last night. It was kind of a really hot day so it's probably not a good time to transplant. I actually transplanted them in the evening so it was still hot and they don't look so great. Probably not the best time to transplant. Uh, I did get it up by the roots but the roots were taking a little while to adjust. But thank God I remembered I had a uh, root establisher for transplants. Uh, this little natural chemical that you can put together for the roots and I put that on today so hopefully that will work but the reality is it is so important to be rooted in life you know not only be filled up with life which is what I was trying to get at with the other scripture but to be rooted with life and our root establisher is our relationship with Jesus Christ, a daily relationship with Him throughout the ups and downs of our day, throughout the ebbs and flows of our day. And I want to go to Romans 5. That's what came to me first when I started thinking about this. Romans 5. One through five, and um, this is for us who who know Christ, and um, and I hope that you that don't can hear the hope that's found here as well. Romans five one through five. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith. And that's what happens if you don't know Jesus, is that it's faith in the fact that he died on the cross for our sins, that we can be saved. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand. Rooted very well in grace and you know just like I want my milkweed to be rooted firmly I want you the here listener to this message and I want myself and my family to be rooted so we can stand in his grace and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and not only that but we also rejoice in our afflictions because we know that affliction produces endurance and I want you to hear this. This is a rooting. This is this is how we get rooted in life in Jesus. Because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character. And proven character produces hope. There's a progression there. 
affliction, endurance, proven character, and hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So, not only should we be filled up with life, but we can be rooted with life in this way. Next, I was in the garden this morning and it's, it's come to my attention that, and it, I'd gotten this advice last year, but it seems like a, apart from all the natural stuff that I'm doing, the best way to get rid of cucumber beetles is just to pick them up manually and squash them uh, and to draw them in by putting like a board by an old board where they can get up under at night and then squash them that way or put them in a soapy uh, mixture where they'll drown and also to find the eggs and deal with them before they hatch uh, you know I put it neem oil put this uh, crushed uh, sea shore shell mixture that's supposed to be really bad for insects I've done a, a lot of things I put out even uh, some cabbage that's supposed to draw them and you know get them there so you can deal with them but you know there's a lot of things you can do but uh, it seems like the best thing is just to manually do it and you know mm -hmm. there is no miracle do way of the problems we have to face with life. Yes, Jesus saves us, but we still live in this life until the new heaven and earth comes where there will be no sin and that we won't have troubles anymore But at some point. But stuff happens. Pests happen. Frustrations happen. Trials happen. It's part of the growth process. And... Um, just is what it is and uh, you know hear the word of the Lord here in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 8 puts things in perspective for those who want to follow Christ 2 Corinthians 12 verse 8 through 10 and Paul is praying because he's got he's got an issue he's dealing with he's got a thorn in the flesh it was given to him a messenger a messenger of Satan to torment me so I would not exalt myself and it must have been pretty frustrating because he said I pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away from me but Paul but Jesus said to Paul my grace is sufficient for you for power is perfected in weakness therefore I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, catastrophes, persecutions, and in pressures because of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, this is battling with life. Battling with Jesus who is for you and not against you. This is going through life no matter how hard it is, day in, day out, relying upon His grace and allowing the power of the resurrected Christ to perfect you through the weaknesses that you deal with. It's good to know this. It's good to know that this is a reality that we aren't left to our own devices to deal with the proverbial crap that hits the fan in life so be encouraged you're not alone and lastly another picture frame that led me to scripture today so my daughter had a beautiful dress today and it was it looked great on her but there was this zipper that we just couldn't zip so we had to forego the wearing of the dress and I was afraid that I was going to tear it up and or it would pop loose or something. But, you know, reality is mm -hmm. she is beautiful, beautiful and 
didn't need this dress. The dress needed to be tailor-made in a certain area. And, uh, and that's fine because we are all tailor-made. And that's what I want to leave you with this morning. I started out with filling up with life. Then I went to being rooted with life and battling with life. But now I want to leave you with being at peace with life. Psalm 139 and starting in verse 13. The word of the Lord. For it was you who created my inward parts. It's talking about God. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise you because I have been remarkably and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know this very well. See, my daughter is remarkably and wonderfully made. So am I. So, so are you. There is a great peace and contentment that comes in the knowledge of being okay with who you are created by God. So, my friend, if you have a water leak in your rain barrel of life, Jesus will fill it. He will stop up the leak and you will flow over with the fullness of life that was created for you before the foundation of this world. If you're having a hard time getting rooted and established in life, Jesus can do that for you. He is the root establisher. He can, through affliction, which produces endurance, endurance which produces proven character, and proven character which produces hope, He can be the glue that holds you together. He already is the one who holds all things together by His Word, so trust Him. If you're facing some pest in life, including yourself, because we are our greatest pest at times, know that you can battle with life, that He is for you and not against you, that His grace is sufficient, for power is made perfect in weakness. He is for you and not against you. He will give you the strength to make it. And if you aren't at peace with your life, you're not at peace with the life giver who has fearfully and wonderfully made you I want you to know mm -hmm. that it's true he has made you perfect he has made you wonderful and he has made you with a great purpose don't mm -hmm. succumb to lesser purposes mm -hmm. The Lord bless you and keep you. I hope you have a great day. And I'd love to hear what you have to say about the message. And if you want me to pray for you, I surely will. And please pray for me because I am a work in progress too.